One billion years in the future, Earth still exists, though maybe not as we imagine it. Eras upon bygone eras worth of technology have been left behind by eight previous and fallen civilizations. It is now up to the denizens of the Ninth World to piece together what was left behind. Perhaps they're looking to carve out their place in the world, or simply to survive a land riddled with weird and unearthly dangers. Or perhaps still, they just wish to learn and uncover the secrets of the Numenera. Whatever it is this new era of adventurers and heroes is looking to discover, they'll have to dig through the imprinted echoes of the past to find it. Hello, and welcome to Imprinted Echoes, a family-friendly Numenera actual play podcast. My name is Zan, and I'm your GM. Thanks for joining us today. As always, we hope you're staying safe and healthy. The group finally makes it to the center of the beanstalk, but there's still work to be done and problems to solve before they can make use of the technology here. Reality is reformed, membranes are dispersed, and journeys are begun. Join us as Nehemiah, Smallren, and Jory follow the imprinted echoes of a different dimension. Going around the hallway a little bit more, you eventually make your way to what looks to be the exact opposite side of this large circular room you've been looking in on. You had been kind of tracking Mm -hmm. where you were, and you're now over where you saw that door. And approaching that, there is an elevator that goes down. Oh, check it out. Go into the elevator, and as you descend, that fuzzy, dissipating feeling is palpable. It becomes more and more until you get to the bottom where this elevator stops and the door opens and it is near nauseating how strong it is here. You don't go anywhere but it feels like you are about to at any second. It feels like you are on the precipice of making that happen. Nehemiah especially, you're recognizing this as this is how it feels before you f- Yep. Everyone else, you've felt this once before when you were up above at that control panel. All right. But it is kind of a constant, uncomfortable feeling. All right, everybody fan out. Be careful. Oh, I don't like this at all. It's pretty bad. This is uncomfortable. The only way to fix it, I think, is to figure out how to turn that central pillar on. I think that's what we got to (sighs) do. See if we can find, like, a panel or something, and we'll go from there. Am I wrong, or... Does activating what's in here, it, the the last, if we do something here, are we going to go somewhere? It's distinctly possible. Look, I didn't do something last time and I went somewhere. I, I know, but like, I feel like... I will say the control panel that we first found when we felt this feeling did have something that said, activate... Did it not? I think it said engage. Engage. Is it possible that in some way that would turn on this central pillar? Don't see why not. It could. Before we attempt to examine a room that looks to have been thoroughly picked over, perhaps we should try to use what we know to be a more functional control panel. To be fair, that control panel was non-functional. That was the one with the sparks coming out of it. Oh, okay. Or not. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not trying to quash any ideas. I just wanted to keep you from, like, going back and forth with something that wouldn't work. I'm going to stick my head in the door and see what happens. Be ready to pull me out if... Yeah. And I will walk up to the weird membrane and just stick my head in. You go to stick your head through... And you immediately recoil in pain as it feels as though your consciousness is spread out over multiple places at once. Oh, no. Nope. 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 And you reel back and take four intellect damage. What happened? Uh, Nehemiah immediately sits down, now only having four intellect points. Oh, dear. Nehemiah sits down, head in his hands. Ah, oh, God, ow. Oh. Oh, boy. I felt... I felt like I was everywhere. 
I felt like I just jumped to a hundred different places all at the same time, but only in my head. Oh, dear. I do not recommend that. Yeah, I need to take a nap or something. Holy cow. Go for one of those as well. If you guys want to sit down and take an hour. Might be a good idea. Yeah. (sighs) All right. So you all take 10 minutes or so to sit down and just recoup for a moment. Okay. So as a point in the right direction, Mm -hmm. while singing the song has not done anything, the lyrics might give answers. Hmm. All right. So think about the lyrics going through. Protection, dispersion, repair. Okay. We found the dispersion room. That's the thread room. That's the thread model. The thread model. Oh, okay. Get to that. Residual energy may hinder you here. That's probably this terrible fuzziness that is pulling us in different dimensions. That's the energy. Okay. That's what's hindering us. That shield seems to be pretty solid protection. At least it proved to be for Smallrin. Yeah. Do we have anything that could just straight up repair something? I mean, I don't even know what specifically is broken. I mean, I pull out the box. Could this do something? I pull out the weird beam lens drill. <laughs> I feel like that's more destruction. <laughs> Probably, but it's what I got. No, but that box that what you were talking about, Joy, that could work. Yeah. It's a piece of reality. Yeah. Right. So what needs a piece of reality put into it? Well, considering that we keep going to different realities. Ooh, good point. Maybe this will help repair that problem. Where do we go to make that repair? So is there a way that we could keep going further up? Because what I'm guessing is that all of those threads are converging somewhere. And wherever that is, is busted. This elevator does seem to also go up. Oh, let's check that. Let's keep going up. You head up and up and up and the longest up that you have experienced so far. I did not expect this to be this much of an up. It eventually stops. It doesn't seem to be able to go up any further, and the door opens. Up above you, you see a large sphere made of that translucent glass. The walls here still that ceramic Mm -hmm. white material. But this large, maybe 10-foot-across sphere suspended from the ceiling. And inside, you see all of those golden threads just kind of crisscrossing in and out, connecting across it different ways in a giant network. Mm -hmm. Underneath, there is a mirror that is cracked down the center. Ah, there's your problem. (laughs) That right there. Classic. See it all the time. Mm. Ah, yeah. Never operate your trans-dimensional tower with cracked (laughs) meat. You're going to get sent all over the place, clearly. Went to the meat zone, hated it. Half a star. All right, well, I don't know how to fix this, but this is a problem that can be fixed, presumably. Molly looks up above the sphere. It's not being suspended by anything. It's almost floating. Mm -hmm. There is a tube that comes down to it, and you assume that the different threads are kind of like Mm -hmm. pulling through from that tube. And there also seems to be a light source up there that is kind of illuminating different threads at any given time. And if you look down at the mirror, those lights are also kind of reflected in the mirror, but it's obviously distorted with the crack. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's just a reflection. I think this might be like a... Yeah, no, it's all important. Yeah. I don't suppose anybody here happens to be a mirror repair person. If you believe anything enough. Mac, I Uh, don't... No, I'm, I'm a farmer. As I stated previously. Okay, fair, but I look, I don't know what hobbies you have. <laughs> You're a complex Glass person. Glasswork is not one of them, unfortunately. All right. That's one of the artists, I'm sure. Fair enough, fair enough. And to be fair, most repairs of cracks in glass remain visible. We need to put this back together seamlessly if the light is going to be refracted properly. Mm. We need to remake it. Remake it. Rebuild it. Make it better, faster, stronger. <laughs> Gold, Six million dollar gold dirt it. <laughs> Chase a fur. <laughs> it seems as if perhaps we could use what you discovered, Jory, 
Mm -hmm. If we all focus on it enough, would we be able to get it to assume the form of a mirror? We could give it a shot. Just even repair the mirror. Like, I imagine this thing has some special properties. I don't know. Super foam. Well, I will set it down and sit by it and kind of close my eyes and start thinking. You set it in front of you and you start thinking. And Mac actually sits right down next to you and also starts concentrating. And the more you look at it, the more you can get it to at least assume kind of like a reflective surface in some way. It doesn't seem exactly right. But with Mac's help, even, it starts to be a little more akin to something reflective. Mac's belief is very strong. Mm -hmm. It is. Okay. Uh, Jory, um, Mm. my understanding of this stuff is correct. I don't have as much experience as you, but I don't think we can just think it into existence. I think we have to use it to work in conjunction with it. Like, it changes reality. It doesn't necessarily create something in and of itself. It's not a... Mm. Am I right? Um... Probably. (laughs) It sounds like perhaps the way to go would be to focus on the idea of the mirror being whole again. I like that idea. You're a genius. I will place it on the mirror. You place it on the mirror and you start thinking about the mirror itself being repaired. Mm -hmm. Does everyone concentrate on that? Oh, yes. Start thinking about that. And the more you try and focus on that mirror being one large, flat, reflective, complete, perfect surface, you hear first a crack, and you see another crack going the opposite way appear on the mirror. And then you hear that same crack in reverse, as though it had been recorded and then played in reverse. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that would describe, what that would sound like, but that's what you hear. Sure. And then you hear a second one in reverse happen, and that first original crack that was down the center smooths over as though it had never been there. And the cosmic phone kind of like seeps down onto that and is used up. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And as soon as that happens, you all get that lurch in your stomach again. And you all feel like your consciousness is starting to be spread out. It's not as immediate as what you had, Nehemiah, when you tried to stick your head through that membrane. But it's almost as though you feel your mind being slowly stretched in across multiple places and multiple times and multiple ideas. And you see lights dancing along the different mm-hmm. golden threads in there and those lights being reflected down in the mirror. All right. And it seems to be at least doing something again. All right, let's get out of here. Back down yes. the elevator. Okay. And you get back to the base where the antechamber was. Mm-hmm. And that membrane is still there, but you can see the pillar in the center is now lit up. Mm -hmm. Do we still feel the fuzzy feeling down here? Yes. Okay. It's not like it was up above. You don't feel your mind being pulled thin, but you feel that kind of like weird physical nauseating fuzzy. I would like to jog back to the spider room. Sure. Is the model any different now? Yes. Okay. You can see on the walls there are more threads Mm -hmm. that have been put up since and that is reflected in the model. Interesting. Okay. I jog back, fill everybody in. So something happened. Any ideas? Well, we're gonna need to get through this membrane somehow. Yeah. Boy, if I had a nickel for every time I heard that. I take the butt of my spear Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. just kind of poke it. It shudders a little bit, but nothing happens. Okay. Nehemiah will go up and just touch it. Well, again, you get that feeling like your brain kind of starting to like pull, but like as soon as you let go, it's it's, it's gone. gone. Okay. Is it better than last time or about the same? It's about the same. Okay. Yeah. I would like to try touching it with the shield since that mm. seemed to absorb bad energy last time. That's true. Mm-hmm. So Smallrin's going to like put the shield on her arm and then kind of go up and press the outside of the shield against the membrane. You kind of press it against there and it starts to push through the other side and as it kind of like envelops around you like in your arm, you do not get hurt. Well, this seems to be working and I will try to press all the way through. You get into the room and your foot crunches down on whatever this debris on the floor 
is, and looking at it closer now, you realize it is shells, maybe of some sort of crustacean. Oh, interesting. I would like to, (laughs) I guess, push the shield back through the membrane so one of the others Mm -hmm. can take it and follow me through. Sure. You rotate the shield through. You can kind of like send it back through and people use it to get back and forth. And eventually you are all within this main chamber. Huh. That hexagonal pillar at the center is maybe just above waist height and now glowing a soft blue. And it has these four kind of iridescent tubes that are pointed down towards this area. Looking up at them, those are not built like anything else you've seen here. And upon closer inspection, you can see small protrusions on them going up. And it looks almost like these shells, these crustacean shells that have been underfoot and crunching every time you take a step. Hmm. Do I recognize these crustacean shells from anything? Yes. These are beetle crab shells. Okay. They are vermin, essentially. They sleep for long periods of time. They hibernate, but they're incredibly territorial. And if awoken from said hibernation, they tend to swarm, flying out of their tubular nests and surrounding intruders. (sighs) All right. So here's problem number two. I was right. We have an infestation. (laughs) Just not the kind I was thinking of. Don't suppose any of y'all have any way to kill a whole bunch of bugs all at the same time. No. (sighs) But Mm -hmm. I will say the body we found had ciphers on it. I didn't bother to take them because we were in a hurry. Sure. And also I'm at my limit. But perhaps we go back and see if they have anything useful. I mean, I've got a couple other things that we can try. Got one thing I want to try, and Nehemiah will take out the drill laser. Mm -hmm. I could probably hit it with this. However, these things are nasty. I don't want to wake him up. And shooting them with this will definitely wake him up. He'll also point to the choker. I could also just yell at him and hopefully just take them all out in one go, but I don't want to hurt the pillar. Do we know... That they haven't been awoken and dealt with already. There are a lot of shells. Nima, you know that they molt at an alarming rate. Yeah, these things just lose their shells like once every couple of weeks. That's probably what we're seeing here. I'm guessing they made their nests here whenever the last time this place was in operation. People didn't notice them because, you know, they can live in the walls for a while. And now they've started to work their way in. And I'm guessing whatever it is that they're doing is causing enough of a disturbance to the internal machinery that it's starting to cause a problem. But yeah, if you want to dip back, maybe check out those other ciphers, see if there's anything else. And then worst case scenario, Nehemiah will threateningly hold the drill laser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go with this. Um, <sighs> cool. Since I'm at my cipher limit, I'm just going to take out the two things I have and kind of set them aside on the ground. So I've got my cat's eye and the bounder or teleporter, and I'm just going to set those aside, and I think I can run back on my own, and I'll return as soon as I can. All right, we'll see you in a few. So I take the shield, and I'll head out. Okay. So, Smaller, you run back to the room that makes you produce green slime. You're not in there long enough to start feeling thirsty again, but you quickly grab the two ciphers that were on this corpse. You pick up a magnetic shield and a psychic communique. Interesting. All right. The magnetic shield is a pair of gloves that have little metal plates on the fingers that when you put them together, they kind of stick and then you can pull them apart and it kind of creates this force around you, and for 10 minutes, metal objects can't come within an immediate range when it's activated. Metal items already within the area of the device are slowly pushed away from them, so it kind of creates this magnetic repulsion bubble around the user. The psychic communique is actually a pill that you ingest. It comes in these little capsules, almost, and it allows the user to project a one-time one-way telepathic message up to 10 words with unlimited range to anyone you know. It's essentially a mini one-use sending. 
Interesting. Yeah. Could it be used to convey not so much a verbal message as a feeling? Because because crabs don't have language, I would assume. <laughs> not like. <laughs> but if I could convey the strong impulse to abandon your home and flee. Unlikely. <laughs> yeah, I, I figured that was a stretch. However, wait a minute. Hold on. I remembered a thing. Could I do that while using my intense interaction, which gives me an asset on intimidating, persuading, and influencing people for ten minutes? Could I attempt to psychically bully the crabs? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> oh, I don't like the way you said that. I don't I'm like the way you it. said that, but I kind of want to try it. I'm here for psychic crustacean <laughs> intimidation. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, uh, Smallrin is going to come back and consult with her friends, her teammates, her allies in the war against crustaceans. Smallrin comes back through the membrane shield first, brandishing just a pill and gives you this idea thoughts that's dicey i don't know how sentient they are if they're sentient enough to be bullied but <laughs> i mean i'll give it a shot and if it don't work i'll give it a shot <laughs> gesture with the drill again so yeah we repeat the maneuver wandering through the membrane using the shield individually mm -hmm. small Ren pops that pill Yep. And what do you say, think, project? Basically, I want to project an idea of... This is the phrasing I'm going to use, but I want to try and impress this as a feeling rather than just saying, because I know they won't understand language. Sure. The basic idea is your homes are unstable. Flee immediately as far as you can. Okay. I'm going to have you make an intellectual level three. Okay. So it'll be a level three, intense interaction. I don't think anything I'm trained in would apply, but I am going to spend for a point of effort. Okay, this is intellect, yes. since it's right, psychic. Cool. <sighs> so it'll be a level one, level <laughs> three, a better. Hopefully roll 20 oh, isn't Lord. mean to you. We're going to send a quick prayer to the stones on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Success with a minor hey. effect, 19. Okay, thoughts on the minor effect? Basically, I just would like to make sure that the crabs do not do any further damage on their way out. Sure. You project this out and you see a flurry of movement of these crabs kind of like pouring out of this tubular nest, all four of them. And they do fly a little bit. They are kind of like this mix between beetle and crab. They kind of flitter around and float around, kind of looking around, almost panicked for a while, not touching anything else in the area. But then eventually they all swarm back up through the tubes and you hear kind of like a, almost like a digging sound as it sounds like they're trying to like dig out and up through whatever part of this they came through. And after a couple of minutes, that sound disperses and they are no longer there. Good work. Thank you. Well, shall we? Let's. You head back into the room? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Crab shell <laughs> still underfoot. <laughs> Hexagonal pillar still lit up a light blue. Still fuzzy feeling? Still very fuzzy. I walk up to the pillar and like place a hand on it. That fuzzy feeling, I don't want to say it intensifies, but you can tell where it's coming from, and it is specifically coming from the pillar. All right. We still got those nests up there, don't we? Mm hmm That might be causing interference, because it's probably made out of like metal, right? Or, like, pieces of metal mixed in there. Yeah. yeah. I will take out Chekhov's drill, mm -hmm. and I'm going to just fire at the four things just to bring those down, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Utilize it. So that is a cipher, so go ahead and mark that off. Yep. And those come shattering down, and that fuzzy feeling disperses, but now what you feel is that stomach lurching, mm. and you feel that stronger and stronger. And, Jory, you can see the inscription on the top now. The inscription on the top is a, a series of symbols, not so much as it is words, but what you equate to Roman numerals. Mm -hmm. that it's not what they are, but that's like this language's version of Roman right, numerals. Okay. And it labels one through six around the hexagon, each with like a small indentation around it and about the size of a thumb. It's counting to six. Hmm. 
Maybe we just need to put our thumbs in it. There are six of us. Shot? But no, there's five of us. There's five. But everyone has two thumbs. Well, you want to get huh. technical. Let's try that. I do have another idea, though, if it comes to it. Well, what is it? Before we go doing something, <laughs> Before what is we it? touch things well, in a place that sends us to <laughs> there's the, there, there, There's the weird, like, bubble dudes upstairs. Right. We're still, like, that's still so weird. We still don't know what that is for. Why is there a room that turns our sweat into slime? That's weird. You don't put one of those in there without needing it. I mean, there was stuff at the Ogre that we couldn't explain. Why is there a disc that goes up and down when you ask it questions? Okay, fair. Yep. Yep. I mean, I just figured it was like, you know, people like, I don't know. You're right. Fair enough. Fair enough. So we thumb it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Why not? Who's putting their thumbs in? I will. Okay. Nehemiah drops into one. Okay. I'll do two. I will. You put two thumbs for Jory? Yes. Mac? I don't think I'm worthy to make this... I don't think this is a... I'll drop a second thumb. I was going to say, perhaps, Molly, you and Mac should stay here. Mm. Uh, Are you sure? I would rather not leave Mac here alone. I don't know how well he would do. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll wait here for you for a while... Um, as long as our rations last, at least. Okay. We'll go from there. Sounds good. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen when you do this, but if you go somewhere or do something, be safe. You as well. I'm sure we'll see you soon. Yeah. I hope so. Hopefully it's the reverse time thing where you're all gone for like a day and it's been two minutes here. (laughs) We'll see. Here's hoping. That'd be nice. Okay. All right. All right. Best of luck, I guess. And Mac kind of steps back, and Molly steps back with him. And the three of you press your thumbs into these slots. And that fuzzy feeling comes over you, and that lurch in your stomach pulls you in towards the pillar, your proprioception, the feeling of the world around you and the energies around you, not your body, but your consciousness, your... Your self-awareness pulls it in towards this pillar, and there is a bright flash of light. And from Molly and Mac's perspective, you all disappear. And the three of you are plunged into total darkness. (laughs) (laughs) Spooky. Where are we going? The song has been telling you the entire time. Yep. I choose to believe the Vanta Black capital of the world. (laughs) There it is. Also, fun fact, one of the ciphers that I put on the ground so I could go grab those ciphers off the dead body was, and I quote, Cat's Eye, which grants the ability to see in the dark for eight hours. Yay! But I don't have it with me. (laughs) No! (laughs) I will tell you right now, that's it wouldn't help you. No. That makes it worse, Zan. <laughs> it does. Zan, that's worse. It doesn't help, but good try. I'm very excited oh, for our boy. next game. Excellent. Thank you so much for listening to episode 56 of Imprinted Echoes. As always, if you'd like to follow the podcast on social media, you can find us on Twitter and Facebook at Imprinted Echoes and our website at imprintedechoes.com. There you'll find links to the Ghostlight Media merch store, as well as our network's Patreon, if you're able to help us out monetarily. And on that note, I would love to thank Atan, Jeremy, and Carlin for their support. If you'd like to help us out in other ways, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast, leave us a rating and review, and tell a friend about the show. All of those things continue to go a long way in helping us out. You can find our hosts on Twitter as well, myself at Covered and Sawdust, Chase at TQ Loudly, Rin at Rin underscore Moran, and Bridget at Really Bridget. And of course, our network, Ghostlight Media, at GLM Pods. Thank you once again for listening, and I hope you'll come back in two weeks to hear yet another episode of Imprinted Echoes. And until then, may your ciphers never malfunction. Imprinted Echoes is produced by Zan Campbell Johannes and Chase Greenley, and is edited by Alex Berkowitz. Original show theme music is by Justin Longacre. This has been a Ghost Light Media production.